We're the Sailing Infidels. I'm Wendy, and that's Ron. And together we sail cosmic debris. And so far we've covered the entire west coast of Canada, all the way to Mexico. And we're in the Sea of Cortez now, happy to be living life one lap at a time. After a 10 day stay in Asuncion, unable to get satisfaction for our reefer unit, we added ourselves to the list of boats leaving. As the sky shed its cloak of darkness on the morning of December 18th, we emerged from below decks to see first breakpoint and then Estrella sailing out. A short time later and under sail for the open sea, thump. Well, here comes Wendy with the uh, boat hook that has the GoPro on it because we had to have a look at the prop and we found why we were sailing so slow. Uh, we were trailing. <laughs> Um, a ton of fishing line behind us and you know what it's really hard to turn when you got a drove behind you which is effectively what we had I uh, went back to set up the wind vane and I saw this big yellow line under the water trailing behind us and it's like what is that the dinghy painter no yeah it looks kind of big Oh, we hit that float. Ah, uh, fishing line. So we got out the GoPro. Then we looked at the, the, the front of the keel and it wasn't on the front of the keel. So then we brought it back to the stern again and looked and sure enough, it was hung off the prop. But the prop wasn't spinning when, like we were sailing when we hit the floats. So that was a good thing anyways. And then so we've said, well, fuck it. I guess we're going to have to turn around because we got sailing and back toward the anchorage they, they came off and then we got turned around and underway again and definitely doubled our speed and our steering problems are back so <laughs> <coughs> but anyways so that little side was over but yeah with the with the drogue behind us and the wind vane and uh the odd correction i guess this might not be such a, a bad 180 mile trip. 180 miles to uh, Santa Maria. See you there. Well, the little drogue that we hastily rigged to mimic the effect of the crab pots and keep us sailing true tangled itself up and choked itself to death. Fixable, but only with a proper line, so we were back to hand steering. Having fun yet? Three, two, to ten, down, 20. 20, what did you say, 26, 28? 28. Yeah. And these are just one meter. This off of Punta Abrejos. Open the eyes, that means. Reef early, really early. Reef when it's only two knots of wind. <laughs> See. So we've got a double reef in the main. The Yankee is mostly furled in, because we can't furl it in anymore, and the space is still out. Right. Open up the door to get the running box thing set, and got a face full of water. That was a really, really great timing. The wind was on and off all the time. It really kept us busy with sail plan changes and reefing. It was muy importante for us to keep sailing as much as possible because of the condition the fridge was in. Sail 100% was the goal. The fridge is right next to the engine room. Of course, the fridge box itself is insulated, but we have no idea by how much and when the engine is putting out 150 degrees heat as no bueno. All in all, we were doing pretty good. Overall, we weren't covering ground as fast as I wanted, but we were moving most of the time and never had to start the Garth Monster at all until we reached the bite that we'd have to cross to reach Bahia Magdalena and the wind died completely. 
Then we had a choice to make, bob and drift until some wind comes up or motor. If we chose to motor, where to? San Monico or Bahia Magdalena? Sorry about the lack of wind in the microphone, but this is life when you're becalmed at sea. Only 20 miles from land, 20 miles from a, a decent anchorage and barely a breath of wind. So it's kind of a bummer. We got, uh, we're on the, just a little bit too far out for the downwind sailing into San Juanico. And that's where we wanted to be. Well, that was plan B because we, we couldn't make it all the way across to um, Bahia Santa Maria with the wind um, such as it was yesterday. And I knew this was coming, so we decided to alter course to San Juanico. Sunrise on day four? <sighs> day four. Any words today, Captain? Any thoughts of the last couple of nights? Fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. So why'd you break down and start the engine? Because it's the only way we're going to make it with daylight now. And that just means another night out here. Because there's no wind. Yeah. Not to go to Mag Bay or to go to San Juanito. So if, if some wind comes up before we get to San Juanito, we'll take it wherever it goes, I guess. Okay. Sounds like a good plan. It's been a crazy couple of nights. <laughs> yeah. No wind sucks. Tried to get out and sail at about three o'clock in the morning. For about three hours and then gave up. What a beautiful sunrise. And man, does it ever come up fast. So who the hell do you think you are, hey? Well, we finally made it to Bahia, San Juanico. This is a surfing destination. After being becalmed for, what, a couple of days? <laughs> and this is our first sunset. As I may have mentioned before, our friend was up in Canada for Christmas and offered to bring us back a new autopilot. He has a place in San Juanico, but since he'd be flying into Cabo San Lucas, the original plan was to meet him in La Paz on his way back to San Juanico. After being becalmed for so long and really not wanting to go another 400 or so miles without an autopilot, we decided to hang out for a few weeks and wait for him. He told us about his friend Elise and she about us, and that is how we came to know St. Elise. I asked her if she knew of anyone who might be willing to take us into the city of Constitucion, 110 or so miles inland for banking and hopefully boat parts. Sure, no problem, she said. We can go tomorrow. We're going on a road trip. Road trip. Road trip. 